nkuko mubibona turi hano London umuji mukuru w'igihugu cy'ubwongereza aha rero tukaba turi kuri ambassade y'u Rwanda aho ubuyobozi bwa ambassade bukorera hakaba rero hagiye kuba igikorwa igikorwa cyo kushikiriza umwamikazi w'ubwongereza Elizabeth wa kabiri ashikirizwa impapuro zimuha uburenganzira bwo guhagarara u Rwanda muri iki gihugu uwo ni high commissioner uh, Johnson Businge mukaba rero mugiye kubikurikira tukaba turi hano ngo tubagezeho idonido ndabararikira igicandiro TV igicandiro TV ni TV yanyu ni TV yacu aho muzajya mukurikira amakuru yizewe amakuru y'umwimerere muzakurikira amakuru y'umutekano mukurikire amakuru yubanye n'amahanga mukurikire amakuru ya politike ndetse n'amakuru y'imyidagaduro ngewe rero uzabibagezaho nitwa Rohasha Ejide
Rwandan community, ladies and gentlemen. Permit me first to thank my president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, for giving me the honor and privilege to serve my country as High Commissioner of the United Kingdom. May I also thank you, the diplomatic corps, friends, and fellow Rwandans for attending today. Today, I had the great honor of presenting my credentials to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I also presented my beautiful and darling wife to her. <laughs> From the way she was smiling <laughs> and the conversation that happened, no doubt, my wife is as beautiful as I told her long ago. <laughs> I come to the UK to replace my worthy predecessors, the most recent of whom is High Commissioner Yamina Kalitai. From the Kati service, your excellencies have graciously permitted me. I have found that they cultivated a lot of friendship and goodwill towards one. You have opened your doors, given me the speciality coffees and teas that you serve only to special guests. All because of my predecessors. They collectively left a well manicured path for me. On Rwanda's and their behalf, I thank you, and I hope that I'll be able to fit in their shoes. And you will forgive me if I don't, since they are clearly such large shoes. It was a privilege to have a wide ranging conversation with Her Majesty particularly in the Platinum Jubilee year, where we are celebrating a lifetime of service to the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth as a whole. I use the opportunity to convey my warm greetings and a message of best wishes from His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda. I also reaffirm how invaluable Rwanda considers its strong relationship and partnership with the United Kingdom <coughs> and trained to work tirelessly during my tour of duty to ensure that the solid collaboration between our two countries continues to grow. In turn, Her Majesty conveyed her best regards to President Kagame and the people of Rwanda. Of particular interest in the conversation was the upcoming Commonwealth Heads of Government Summit, known as Chogen, which will be held in Kigali, Rwanda, two months from now. I believe members of the Commonwealth are aware, but allow me to brief you just a little. Our aim for children is to bring energy and focus in responding to the needs of the 2.5 billion citizens of the Commonwealth. The overall theme of the summit is delivering a common future, <coughs> connecting, innovating, <coughs> transforming. We firmly believe the Commonwealth can become a powerful voice in advocating for countries' needs, particularly as we focus on restarting our economies in the wake of the pandemic. The recent crises have shown our commonality as a Commonwealth and the pressing need for increased cooperation and coordination. The summit and the associated forums, including the youth, women, business, and people's forum, as well as a side event on malaria and NTDs, will give member states a unique platform to share best practices, learn from each other's successes and failures, and exchange knowledge for greater impact. Preparations are on track, and we look forward to seeing many of you in Kigali, where you can for sure expect very warm welcome. Let me also use this occasion to highlight and appreciate Rwanda's strong bilateral relationship with the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom was one of the first few bilateral development partners to cooperate with Rwanda after the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, despite the UK having had no significant historical ties <coughs> to the country. 
Since then, the partnership has gone from strength to strength. The government of Rwanda utilized the UK's development partnership resources efficiently and transparently to invest in people, reduce poverty, and spur strong and rapid economic growth. Through our modest state capabilities, responsiveness, and a citizen-centered approach to governance, Rwanda is on track transforming into a knowledge-based economy, a financial hub, regional service hub, and the Center for Innovation and Technology. Pre-pandemic, we were achieving about 8% GDP growth annually, and we are working to try and achieve that level. As a side note, on this development journey, we even built a cricket stadium. <laughs> <laughs> with partners from the United Kingdom, which they call the Lords of East Africa. <laughs> To metamorphose from development partnership to investment and trade, we work daily on making Rwanda as investor-friendly as possible. We also work to ensure it gets easier to do business in Rwanda by shortening times of a role, responding effectively to business issues, and developing lasting commercial partnerships. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, you will most likely have heard or read that we are currently deepening our cooperation with the UK with a bold new partnership which takes an innovative approach to addressing the global migration crisis. The Rwanda UK Migration and Economic Development Partnership will prioritize the dignity and safety of migrants whilst also investing in Rwanda's economic development, creating professional and personal development opportunities for migrants and Rwandans alike. We also hope that it will trigger a review of the 1951 Refugee Convention, which clearly no longer serves the current migration where migrant traffickers <coughs> seem to be the ones in charge. There have been misconceptions, misinterpretations, outright stereotypes and prejudice about the arrangement and about work. This is very unfair, and permit me to clarify something. Rwanda has a history, and many of us know, as many of us know, where the absence of humanity and humanitarian action cost our country dearly in human beings, in material things, and in time. The genocide against the Tutsi in 1994 was foreseeable because it was planned over time, and evidence was about. It was also preventable since the planning and capacity to execute it were known. It was repressible with superior capabilities. It was neither prevented nor repressed, and the cost was a million people killed in 100 days. The country and the state shuttered almost beyond repair, a future clearly uncertain. But because our dreams and hopes were always stronger than our fears, we embarked on picking up the pieces and rebuilding as the only choice available. We are still building today. But one lasting effect of this context and history, if you have been watching, is that Rwanda's story since 1994 is a story of humanitarian intervention, peacekeeping, peace support, and rescue of people in peril, universal health for people, universal education, and so on. It is a story of putting humanity first. Rwanda, despite our small size and stage in development, today hosts refugees from the region, from the continent, and from other nations such as Afghanistan. Intervention when people are in distress defines who we are as a country and as a people. While we accept we have a small land size which we cannot do anything about, we refuse to accept to have small hearts because we can do something about hearts. Therefore, partnering with the UK and any other country that might be interested to address a global issue involving human beings in need 
is neither new nor difficult for Wanda to relate with. Commentators of various motivations, some political, who over the last few weeks have traded stereotypes, prejudice, and outright lies sometimes against Wanda, have traded lies and prejudice against, and outright lies against Wanda and the partnership. They present a wonder of their thinking, not the real wonder that we know and we serve. They obscure the reality. They need to know that there are migrants already and refugees long settled in Rwanda. They can and they do tell their own stories and they are listened to. 